Dajiahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huo Guo Dawa. You know, I've been in China since day one of the COVID-19 discovery in 2019. And I just happened to move to Shanghai right in time for a million year long COVID lockdown. So I'm not exactly a stranger to the controversies China's faced over the last few years. The public conversation gets muddled and confused though, with people virtue signaling their positions and feigning expertise. When I predicted there would be over 80 million COVID-19 cases in the United States, back when they were only reporting 17 cases, turned out I was right. But I'm not always right. Making these kinds of predictions can be difficult, and I am not an expert. Few people are truly experts in subjects like COVID or geopolitics or China. If you're making predictions about wars or world events, you need someone who's an actual expert on your team. Someone serious, not some virtue signaling hack. People like that are despicable. Let me introduce you to one such person. Uh, sorry, that probably wasn't clear enough. I'm not talking about an expert. I'm talking about a virtue signaling hack. His name is Peter Zion. My friend in America sent me a video the other day like most Americans, he gets his opinion of China from the news. And he is aware that there's bias in the news, but it's hard to get across just how rampant that bias is to people who don't actually live here for any extended amount of time. Anyway, the video he sent me was quite interesting. It was of a guy blabbering about China to some U.S. military personnel. So I basically just looked the guy up in the video, Peter Zion. And, well, it turns out he is an expert. An expert at making people think that he's an expert. His Twitter is advertising some books, and long story short, his books promote an idea that's something like America will close itself off from the rest of the world, and that will basically throw everyone else into the Stone Age, or something like that. I, I don't really care about his broad theories. What I want to know is, what has he been flapping his gums about with China? So let's do some research. Let's see here. His profile picture is a virtue signal. He supports Ukraine by buying a tie, which was certainly not made in Ukraine. Why he doesn't support any of the other dozens of ongoing conflicts all around the world that don't involve white people is never explained. We're going to go through one of his actual seminars, which is like a masterclass in incompetence, but that's for a later video. For now, we warm up with a video he made in a dressing room? It's all about the Shanghai lockdown. I know a little bit about that considering I'm in it right now, but I mean, I'm not an expert. So let's see the kind of insight Peter can offer us. There is an ongoing COVID lockdown in Shanghai that has been going on since April 5th. Wrong, not April 5th, but okay, one slip up, go on. Most Shanghai residents have been unable to leave their apartment even to get food. Well, the issue isn't really that we weren't able to go out to get food. It's that there's no food to get because everything's closed. So really the issue is people needed to go out to make food first. If you have a high rise with full of condos, two people are allowed to go shopping for everyone once a day for two hours. I have no idea what you're talking about. Where would they buy food from? Uh, who are these magic two people? Uh, where are you getting this from? At least where I live, here in Shanghai, that's totally false. Doesn't happen. Never happened. Never heard of it. Literally famine in what's supposedly a first world city. Uh, Shanghai is not a first world city. And no one anywhere is talking about a famine in Shanghai. Uh, personally, I actually gained five kilograms during this lockdown. I am on a diet. In my area, external food was l severely limited for like two days, which scared the hell out of everybody, but we all had food and then they opened up deliveries pretty much right afterwards. I mean, it was very clunky and some parts of it were an embarrassment for what we all know China can do. Everyone knows that. But what's striking me is that you sound like someone who's read a bunch of headlines, but n not really broken through the emotional argument. I'm not really hearing from you the actual issue with this lockdown, which isn't the food issue. The larger issue is anyone who needed medical attention and wasn't able to get it. It's people who have specific needs that are difficult to come by. That's the real issue. Yes, people will complain loudly and perhaps justly when they have the slightest feeling that their food options are limited, but it doesn't make it the real practical issue. 
Now, that's not the complaint I would expect a serious academic or scholar to point to. The Chinese are not as enamored of processed foods as Americans are. No country is, because America is number one when it comes to eating processed food. Or at least that's what this outdated article says. Which really is something I'm not that proud of. And I really don't like the very strong processed food industry in China either. But I feel like you're going to go somewhere really stupid with this. So they would like to have their fish alive when they purchase them. And the cold chain that is required for something like that just does not work when there is limited retail options under a lockdown. So people have been running out of food for days now. Well, I, I don't know what decade we're talking about, but here in the 2020s, the issue of getting food in Shanghai has nothing to do with a shortage of live fish. I've been living in this city for just a year, but I haven't seen any live fish though I'm sure there's some out there somewhere. This is not a city in which the vast majority of people are searching around for live animals, so I don't know where you're getting that from. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen some of the, the Twitter and the TikTok posts of people literally screaming from their windows about what's going on. And in true Orwellian fashion, the Chinese have deployed a small army of drones to take photos of people so that their fines can be sent to the tax bureau for disobeying orders about leaving their windows open during lockdown. Yeah, that is some big government crazy stuff, man. I don't like it one bit. The citizens of Shanghai deserve respect and to be treated humanely and fairly. The government, in my opinion, as I have very clearly said before, is overall doing the right thing, but it needs to be doing a better job at adhering to China's principles. Also, the people's happiness is something that has been increasing in priority as the quality of life improves in China. It's all kind of complicated, unlike your take so far, but I guess there's more coming soon. I also, by the way, didn't like it when the United States used police drones for COVID enforcement, but for some reason, I haven't seen your video about that. I'm sure you were just as uh, descriptive and vocal about the US government for that. And for anyone out there who hasn't realized this yet, this whole anti-drone thing is one of those very simple ways to understand if someone is emotion-based or if they're actually able to discuss things logically. I remember the exact same emotion peddling when the world started using bomb robots and drone strikes. Yes, there's something very creepy and decidedly non-manly about using robots for the military and for police. Uh, cool, gotcha. Now try coming up with an actual argument against it. We can wait. In 2020, when we didn't have a vaccine, our threshold for what would be considered successful was 50% protection against death. And the COVID vaccine that the Chinese ultimately engineered came in at 55%. So, you know, call it a D minus, but a passing grade as bad as it was. Nope, wrong, everything you just said was wrong. Why would the efficacy evaluation of vaccines be based on death prevention? There would be no way to vaccinate against non-lethal diseases. You do realize that, right? You know, everywhere this expert posts something, the top comment seems to be someone pointing out factual errors he makes. This commentator, allegedly a microbiologist, points out numerous disagreements, shall we say, with Peter here and also points out things Peter clearly didn't understand, including, like I said, how complicated efficacy is. Long story short, everything Peter just said is wrong, but we don't need to rely on some YouTube comment by an alleged scientist. We can actually just look into it ourselves. Okay, some study about Sinovac. Let's see, 55%, D minus, passing grade as bad as it was, no, I don't see that. All I see here is that Sinovac is 98.3% effective in preventing COVID deaths in people over the age of 60. If we look up the U.S. grading system for 98.3%, that's not a D-. minus. That's actually an A+. Plus. And I hope everyone can start to see which of these grades he would get if he turned in a research paper to me. And another stupid thing about this is that if he were right then this would actually be an argument for lockdowns. Either that or it would be an argument for letting Chinese people die. Anyway, go on. Uh, there's a lot going on here. So first of all, we've gone from the Wuhan strain to Alpha to Delta to Omicron to Omicron B. Wrong again. 
I mean, you're going out of the way to list these out matter-of-factly as if you've memorized them or something. What about beta? What about all of these other ones? Well, if you're not going to mention them, then don't act like you're giving us some kind of thorough, useful timeline. And at each step, the Chinese vaccine has become less and less effective. And now it's probably only in the low teens versus Omicron B for preventing deaths. Compare that to the Pfizer and Moderna uh, models, the mRNA vaccines that we have in the United States. Uh, they were well above 95%, not just preventing death, but against preventing severe infection and even against pre preventing uh, infection in the first place. Pfizer well above 95% in preventing death, severe infection, and infection. It seems astronomically unlikely that all three of these numbers would be exactly the same. So let's just take a peek at the real numbers, shall we? Pfizer and Omicron. Let's see. Nope, not 95%. This says 65%, which ultimately goes down to 8.8%. In fact, all of them go down over time. That's because science is hard and complicated. And whenever you hear someone say three metrics are all exactly the same number, they can't possibly be that, you should be very skeptical. If you want to understand vaccines, speak to medical experts. Do not take medical advice from Peter Zayan or from me. And what is he getting to with all these false statements anyway? Well, here's his big case study. New Zealand versus Hong Kong. This is next level genius stuff. New Zealanders who have achieved 98% vaccination with those rates have a population that's roughly similar to Hong Kong, which is also in a degree of lockdown. And the Kiwis haven't had a death in weeks. Uh, whereas in uh, Hong Kong, they're talking um, at least in the thousands so far. Wow, that sounds like such a great comparison. Let's take a look. Here's a chart of New Zealand's vaccination rates. The dark green means fully vaccinated. That red dotted line is 90%. And these numbers are the ages. Now let's look at Hong Kong's information. The teal color here is BioNTech doses. Whoops, forgot to mention that, did you? But the key thing here, other than that most of the doses in Hong Kong are the ones you're saying would have saved these people, is, wow, look at the vaccination rate. Not exactly 90%, is it? Just imagine the intellectual dishonesty required to present yourself as an expert and then make this comparison. Wow, that is impressive. Impressively bad. But as we'll see in the next few videos, Peter Zion isn't just some harmless beta spreading misinformation. He has weaseled his way into offering advice to members of the U.S. military. If you're an American citizen like me, you are helping to pay this man for his disinfo. And believe me, there's a lot more where that came from. <sighs> See you in the next one. Thanks, everybody. See ya.